Oh, Mr. Abraham, how are you doing today? Yeah, I'm good, thanks. How about you? Yeah, I'm good. I'm good. I was able to join today. Ah. Abraham, good evening. Hello, good evening. How are you doing? I'm doing good. Oh, Wally, well, we are recording this on, on YouTube as well. Yes, so um, it's something I'm testing actually to see how it works. Okay, okay, good. Filani, how have you been? I think this is the first time I'm seeing, I think I've seen your name before. Yeah, I was uh, around in the first week. Uh, the second week I wasn't. The third week I also joined partly with them today. Okay, okay. So how's it going? Yeah, it's going great. Uh, so it's uh, been like kind of a busy schedule year uh, at work, so that's why. But I'm following through with the recording too partly. But I think I'm free from I've been going through some things in the office, so trying to set to them. So but now I'm through with it. So I probably have to just I'll go through the recordings again. I'm on leave, so I can just go through it with uh, what where we are. Yeah, that's fine. Where are you based? I'm in the UK. Ah, uh, okay, okay. Sounds great. Mm. Mohammed, how are you doing? I'm doing good, sir. How are you? Yeah, I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Um, this time works for you, right? Yes. Okay. It does. <laughs> okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Michael, how are you doing? Okay, we just wait and see how many people joined today. I dropped a message on the group already. Um, because actually today. I'm meant to do less of the talking, and you guys are meant to do more of the talking today. So, hopefully, we have more people join the call and then. Okay, Michael, that's fine. So I'll just wait for like some minutes, maybe six more minutes, and then we'll see how many people join today. Um, just take it from there. Hello, Dan. Is this I can't pronounce the name because this is it Dan Ad? It's a yeah, it's Daniel. Oh, okay. Daniel, Dan Adam. Sorry, I don't know from it's not my name, Google account. Ah, okay. Okay, that's fine. Yeah. How are you doing? Very well, thank you. 
Great. We're just waiting to see if we can get more people joining. Because okay. I just came here to see the work that you guys were able to do. And so I'll be doing less of the talking today and basically okay. and learning from you guys. Hello, Favor. Hello, Rose. Thanks for joining. How are you guys doing? Yeah, so like I was saying before now, I'm just waiting to see if we can get more people to join. Because um, today what we have planned is for like everyone that got the data set last week and was able to look at it, then you can just share with us, like share with everyone the analysis you were able to do and let's learn from each other. That's what we have scheduled and planned for today. Hello, Akiende. Oh, good evening, sir. Evening, how are you doing now? Fine, sir. How's your weekend going? Fine, sir. Thank you. How about yours? Good evening, everybody. Good evening, boss. How are you? Uh, yes, sir. So we have um, eight people on the call now. So once it's two minutes, like five and 10 minutes past six, in the next two minutes actually, we can just get started. And hopefully other people can join us. Um... Okay, I think we can just um, get started then, because it's 10 minutes past already. So, I don't know how many people are prepared today to share what they, they were able to do. So, to give more like info, last week, we went through a couple of things, and then I also shared like a notebook 
terms of like the analysis I did using one sample data set from, from Cargo. And so what I mentioned after the class was that I was gonna send over another different data set to everyone. And so people were meant to just go back and look at that data set and try and do some kind of like data analysis using Python on their own. And then when we come to the class today, what would basically happen is that people would share like what they've been able to do and just talk us through their, their insight and their, their thought process. So I don't know how many people are prepared for that today, because that's, that's majorly what we are supposed to do today. So I'm, I'm meant to do less of the talking and more of the listening today, and then just see what people were able to do. So I don't know if, if you have something to share with us today, um, can you just unmute and, and let us know? Hello, good evening. Hi, good, good evening. Yes, yes, hi. Okay, done. Uh, you go first. So, so I think let's okay. just have an idea. How many people, uh, maybe by sure raising your hand, let's just know we have two or three people presenting today. So, Mohammed is presenting, Dan, Dan is presenting, and um, Rose is presenting, and Michael is presenting. Okay, so um i think this is where we're going to do it i don't know who is who is happy to go first but generally what we're going to do is once it's your turn to present i think we have like the next one hour 48 minutes to do all of the presentation so if you take 10 minutes 15 minutes to present um that's fine and if if anybody is presenting and you have a question you want to ask the person please just raise your hand and then once the person you know, notice that the hands is raised up, then he can ask you to ask the question so that we don't distract anybody who is presenting. So who who is happy to to take us through like this entire process today? Who's happy to get started first? Dan, do you want to go first? Do you want to start kick us off? Okay, all right. Let me let me start then. Okay, great. Thank you. Okay. So I have to share my screen here. Yes, thank you. So if you raise your hand before now, can you just type your, is it possible to just type your name like on the chat if you are presenting? So I'll just take note of, of the names. Because I can't remember everybody that raised their hand. If, if you are presenting to us today, just type your name or just say I'm presenting um, so that I will just take note of that and then know how things will be structured. So we have Dan going first, and then he's just going to share with us the insight and everything he did with, with Python. So over to you, Dan. OK. All right, so of course, I first of all imported my libraries, imported uh, the data, and then I noticed I checked my columns. I noticed there was a missing uh, a missing value in a uh, one of the columns. I and I think it was in a sales. No, 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 sorry. It was in a shopping mall. Shopping mall had a missing row. So I had to drop that row. Yes, that is it. Sorry, so just, I drop. Just to interrupt, before you like go deep into the notebook, can you just use yeah. a minute or two to give us a high level summary of the data set? Like, what, does, what is the data set about? Is it sales or okay. like I think that would be good thank you all right so the data set is about um it's a customer's purchase it has details of um how different customers purchase different goods different categories of goods from 
different malls, I think at different locations. So the data has a, yeah, the total of 10 columns. It yeah, had about 10 columns and then like over 60,000 rows. The columns were invoice number, customer ID, gender, age, category, quantity, price, payment met method, invoice date, and then the shopping mall. Okay, please so go ahead. Yeah, so basically the data, the data set just had information of different customers, how they purchase different categories of goods and from the different malls that purchase them and then the payment method they use in purchasing those goods, the quantity they purchased and then the price. So I checked my data for any null values. Fortunately, there was just one missing value in there, the shopping mall column, which I dropped. And then I noticed that the data set did not have sales column, did not have a sales column. So I had to create a sales column from the price and quantity, which you could see down. see. Sorry, I can't figure it out. But basically, I created um, a sales column, and then I created another column for the uh, different months, and then I grouped the ages. The age I grouped the ages into a group of ten, of ten each. So let me just go straight to my analysis. I did analysis on the shopping mall distribution. I did an analysis on the average sales by category. So I did uh, just to obstruct. So, um, one key thing I think would be good to mention is you, you were saying yeah. things like you created sales. I think you'd be good yes. to sales. what formula did you use? Did you multiply quantity by something? Then, second, yes, yes, I multiplied. Yeah, okay, okay, go ahead. Sorry, secondly, okay. when you go into the insights that you've seen from the data, you'd be good to spend like a good maybe 30 seconds, one minute. Tell us what exactly did you see. So when you did a group by maybe payment method or whatever, what did you see? Is it that a particular group had more than the other group or like so so instead of just running through the present um, instead of just running through the the plots that you have, you'd be good to tell us okay. what you think from the plot you the see. Process. Exactly. Okay. Yeah, so for my to create the sales column, I used I multiplied the price and the quantity column to get my sales column. Let's see if I can get more from Yes, so this is it. Yeah. I'm trying to find the code I used. But what I did was I multiplied my price and quantity to get my sales. And then the uh, the age group, I grouped them into 10, 21 to 30, 0 to 20, 21 to 30, 31 to 40, and then 51 to 60, and then the month of purchase also. I got that from my invoice dates. My invoice data is extracted the months and had a different column for just months, which would help me to which help me to analyze my uh, data, made it more organized. Yes, so this is my this is the formula I used for my sales column: customer quantity times customer price. And then I uh, returned this to see the results of what I've created. So basically, this is what I got when I sales from the price and quantity. This code I used to drop the no value on my shopping mall column.
So now this is my analysis. I did this shopping mall distribution. The purpose of this was to um, find out the market share, if I would say, of each shopping mall. That's the shopping mall that has the highest sales. I found out that the top three malls, which is Mall of Istanbul, Canyon, and Metro City, had a combined over 60% of the entire market share of sales. So these three malls, Mall of Istanbul, Canyon, and Metro City, had over 60% of the total sales from the entire 10 malls. With this having over 20,000, Mall of Istanbul had the highest, Canyon was the second, and then Metro City the third. So these three had over 60% of the entire sales. So what are you computing? Mm -hmm. Is that average sales or total sales or yeah, total sales? Okay. Yeah, by total sales. And I also check the average sales by category. We had uh, ten categories. We had technology category, shoes category, clothing, cosmetics, toys, books souvenirs food and beverages food and beverages so we had um, technology having the highest average sales followed by shoes and then clothing the list was uh, food and beverages followed by souvenirs and then books. I also analyzed the payment method, the most popular payment method that was used by customers. My findings showed that cash had, customers use cash most, and then followed by credit cards and then debit card, but cash had the highest payment method used. And then I analyzed the average sales by months. There was no much, there was no significant difference in this. No significant difference in uh, average sales per month throughout the year. The month with the highest sales was October, and then uh, April, February, June, and May. But then when I did the analysis of total sales by months, I discovered that there was like some significant difference between each month with January having the highest, February coming second, and then October. But in my average sales, it was October that had the highest sales, uh, followed by April. But in my total sales, it was January that came first, and then February. And I think October, which was the first in average sales, was somewhere in the third, somewhere around the third. So I don't know what's the explanation to that, if it's probably an outlier, but yes, that's what I got. So basically, yeah, this was what my analysis was. Yes, and then I also keep this to as a breakdown of what the total sales for each month was. That's in case you can't read, of course, this wasn't very clear enough. So I just did this as a breakdown to show the total sales for each month. With um, January having 25, 25 million, February having 23 million, that's a 2 million difference. October having 21 million, another 2 million difference. October, uh, March, which was next, had uh, 20 million. So this was just a breakdown to explain the graph. I also did the same thing for average sales. Uh, average sales, yes. And then I did the total sales by shopping mall. I did the pie charts to also describe what the exact market share of each shopping mall had for the total sales. Mall of Istanbul had 20.2%, Canyon 21%, Metro City 14.8%, Metropole 10.1%, and then others. So yeah, basically this was just an 
explanation to the other plots that I had done to show a detailed uh, percent market share of each mall with regards to total sales. So yes, basically that's what I did. Thank you very much. All right, awesome. Thanks. Um, is there? A, yeah. Okay. There's a an emoji for clapping. So I'm just clapping for you now. That was great. Thanks for for sharing that. Really, really insightful and, and helpful. I don't know if anyone had a question for Dan when he was presenting because he's just going to be mostly interactive. If there was anything that caught your interest when Dan was presenting, or there was something that you needed more explanations around, does anyone have a question for Dan? Oh, we think everything is okay. Yes, uh, just a comment. Okay, please go ahead. Okay. Um, thank you very much, um, Dan. Thank you. You did a yeah. wonderful, uh, wonderful job. So, like, I was, um, I was wondering because most of the time, um, I read something. Mm -hmm. so if you're using a part chart, um, the the categories or that you're trying to like um, represent in a part chart, they should not be more than um more than five or so because of like for you to have a clear um picture of what you're trying to do so I ju i'm just All suggesting right. like for this two thousand six by shopping mall uh mm -hmm. maybe you should have used something else instead of a patch because they are like um almost 10 10 um 10 columns you show in the patch chart. then mm -hmm. the rest is so good actually i'm actually i'm inspired i just hope i i i do like what you did already because it's wonderful <laughs> I love what you did. Within four weeks, we'll answer a lot anyway. It's impressive. Yeah. Thank you much, brother. Yeah. yeah, thanks to thanks to Mr. Abraham also for, <laughs> for the opportunity. Yeah. Yeah, no worries. So um, like Mohammed said, I really enjoyed your presentation, Dan. I had just one question. Um okay, Favor, do you do you have something to say? Yes, I really want to appreciate uh, Dan's uh, presentation. Very simple and straightforward. Thank you so much. But I really, I want you to shed more light on uh, how you deal with the missing value. Okay, all right. Thank uh, you. First of all, yeah, first of all, I checked, let me just go back to the, first of all, I checked the columns for if there were any missing values. Let's see if I can find it. Because at some point it was becoming to, the codes were becoming too much. So I had to just delete some things to be coming to route it. So let me see if I can find it. Yes, so this was the code I ran for my missing values. So, okay, this obviously I checked. This was after, um, this was after, obviously after I checked, after I had cleaned the missing row. So I discovered that shopping mall, there was one missing row. So after I discovered that, I had to drop, drop, uh, drop, the, drop the missing value. But this was the, this was the code I used. Customer. Customer. I don't know if you can see the code that I wrote for it. I think it's fine. We won't put you on a test on writing any code on, on live call and that because. <laughs> okay. But yes, I just did customer. I, I, called, I called the table. I called the column and then I uh, called the uh, drop no value function. I called the drop uh, no value function. Yes, that's how I dropped it. That's how I removed the missing row. Okay, this is good to know. So usually when you, because this is a like Kaggle data set, you won't really find a lot of occurrences of missing values. But if you're working with real life data sets, um, you would have more of those type of occurrences. So, um, and there are different methods to handle missing values. Um, so I think I will just take note of the, a few things that maybe I will talk about once everyone has presented. Like, so like one of it would be method of hand, handling missing values. But the only comment I had, I really enjoyed your pre um, presentation so much. So thanks for that great work. The only one, one comment I would have is that Usually when you're analyzing your data set like this, so you mentioned one point, for instance, you saw that January had the highest total sales, but then when you checked the average, October had the highest average. So yes, 
I think you were saying it could be something like due to outliers, for instance. So one of the things that would be good to do is because you already have the data sets, it's going to be more direct for you to have looked at the data set and figure out exactly why. So why exactly is, are we having the total January as the first, like highest total, but then October as the first, like highest average. So those are the kind of things that you 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 usually should be prepared for because when you do this type of data analysis, like in real world industry, majority of the time you present it before a lot of other experts who are more familiar, who are also familiar with the data set. And so sometimes you end up with a presentation like this and you have five, 10 questions like following them. In the presentation so but I, I like how you structure things and this is really great so thanks for 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 doing that i think we're going to move to the next person um following dan's presentation i think mohammed you said you wanted to go next yes 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 okay great so so why mohammed is pre preparing to present so if you if you ha have something to share with us today, please feel free to just type your name in, in the comment section so that I'll, I'll get an idea of how many people will be presenting. So at the moment I have um, Dan who just went, uh, Mohammed who is trying to present now, and Rose as well, so three persons. Please, if you have something to share, just type it in the comment section so that I'll have a track record of, of the names. Thank you. So Mohammed, over to you. Hi, good evening, everyone. Good evening. Sorry, I had to use um Jupiter because I was struggling with the Google Colab. Yeah, that's fine. So, like um, first I went through the date. Um, good evening. My name is Mohammed, and um, it's a pleasure to be presenting this this work today. Um, so data is um, so what I did was I went through the data on the Excel sheets first, and I tried to um understand the data. So like and I. I have to take out some dotings on what um, insert that like, might be useful if I draw, draw them from the from the data. Like I say, I, I need to have sales trend uh, sales trends over time, category analysis, payment method distribution, customer demographics, top selling products, and correlation. So I import the data as usual. As the usual, so like um, this is the data. The table of the data. I just have to check if there's a if there are missing values or so. Then I check the shapes of the data. And um, because I want to know the, the type of the type of data data types in the in the data, like I, I want to know the information. So like I can see invoice is an object. Customer ID object, gender is an object, age is an integer, and prices of prices of floats. Then I went straight to process the data. But when I was going through the data, I found out that the table did not have um, a sales column, which of course we, we should have a sales column. <laughs> so I I plan to create a sales column by multiplying price by quantity. And also uh, I said I will, co I will convert this invoice date to a data time, um, data type, and I will check for, I will check and replace null values. I check for the categorical columns, which are these ones. And um, so here I calculate for the sales column. I multiplied sales by quantity is by quantity then it gives us this color mm. it gives us this color as a, as a sales then i went into this to see more description of the data i checked for um, its mean standard deviation and then according to the the, the, the description I have the sum of records of each variable is um, 99,457, uh, 99, which is the total records of each variables. And the, 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 mean for, the mean value for quantity, unit price and sales, um, quantity has um, 
3.00 as a mean value and sales 689 and sorry price 689 and sales 2528 then i check for the average price which is of course this one 689 dollars for the average price which i had here and also calculate the total quantity sold on all the um, on all the malls this 29 29 29,871, no, 29 million, 289,712,000 total quantity sold on all the malls. And I check for the unique customers in the data set. So what I did next was like to check for null values. So me and uh, Dan has maybe a description because for me, when I check mine, like I have, I did not see any null values on the data. I don't know why. Then I proceed. I proceed by looking for the top five sales with the most purchase. The top five categories with, with the high, with the highest sales. Then I plot a bar chart. I consider the bar charts here. We can see that the cloth category, clothing category, has the highest sales, followed by shoes, technology, and cosmetics and toys. So these are the top five, according to the the data. Is it by total sales or average sales? By total sales. Okay. Then I also check for the the top selling products. So in, in, you know in each in each category there are products. So I check for the top top selling products on each category. Which is here. So we can see that the, the, the items in the clothing has the highest, are the highest um, selling product, um, followed by shoes and technology. This also is also done by the total sales. Sorry, if you go back to the former, the one you just showed now, mm. um, the you no, know, the one after this one. Yeah, this. So what what does one thousand five hundred for clothing means, and how is that different from one thousand two hundred for clothing? Let me check. So this is based on the total price, like um, I think because I did this one here by product category and price. Like I use um three um columns of variables to to check for the for the for the total sales of each of the products and the items. So each of the products in those categories. Yeah. I think, uh, right. so is, is clothing yeah is is so where does clothing belong to is is clothing the product or the category it's a category so what is the product that clothing falls under let me let me watch the table again yeah that's fine So I can see you have a category column there, right? Yes. This is a category column. And, and so you see that it's possible for clothing to appear more than once. Yes. I wonder yes. if what you were trying to do in that plot there was to get it was like um like um um, like the products inside the category um, of clothing. Maybe I missed this one. I have made, have, might have made a mistake on it. But like I was trying to like um, um, look at the the top selling products on each categories. What when I when I've done for the categories, 
as an overall sales. So I was looking for like um the top selling products on each category as well. Yeah, that's fine. Okay, okay. Oh, yeah. Then here I compared total sales of the mall, total sales um by shopping malls. So you can see here, um, Mall of Istanbul, and uh, has the highest sales, um, five hundred eight million, seven seven twenty four thousand eight and eighty one, followed by this Tayon uh, Mall. They have the highest sales, and followed by Metro City. Because I tell the compare total sales by each mall, by malls actually. And um, out of footage, I see something here. Yeah. Then I check for the payment method and for payment method, which payment method customers prefer the most, or which payment method they use they use to purchase most of the products. So I use a pie chart to give it by percentage. So you can see here, cash has the highest percentage. Um, method, method of payment with forty four point nine percent. Followed by uh, by credit card that's five point that's five point zero and debit card twenty point one. So um, so the highest method of payment is by cash. So most customers prefer to pay with cash. Followed by credit card and debit card. Then I try to do some correlation here, which uh, was not that right. So if you can see here, um, the age and variables, the correlation between, the, between age and variables are very close to zero, indicating no linear relationship, which of course I I had a plan to ask you because I don't understand how much. I was not trying to like um, see what I can do with correlations. And quantity and price 0 0.34, 0 0.34, indicating that that as as the quantity increased, price intend to increase as well. So as you can see, a price the quantity. As the price increase, quantity also increase. And um, quantity and sales. There's a market estimation of 0 0.466 here. And indicate that, indicate that as the quantity increase, the sales tend to increase as well. So both coins and price and coins and sales have a positive correlation. Then, yeah. I hope by giving insights and recommendations. Hey, Adam, can you mute? Sorry, Danny Adams, can you mute yourself? Sorry. Okay, thank you. Continue, please. So I conclude by giving insights and recommendations. So based on the recommend. Uh, insights you know products and price and sales based on the correlation the data shows that strong correlation between the price and sales because as the price increases then also the sales in uh, coins of sales increases so there's a um there's a there's a strong correlation between price and sales so i'll suggest that uh so this so this means that consumers are willing to buy to pay for higher price items which could be due to past maybe they are having more value of the product they are buying or maybe the quantity so therefore we should focus on those products and um, for the top selling product, so the category contribute the most overall. So you might, um, you might want to invest more on clothing because clothing has the high, highest total sales on among all the categories. So I recommend that um, the management or company should invest more on clothing business and products. Um, then for the shopping mall, so the mall of Istanbul have a significant sales compared to all, to the others it might this might be beneficial if we like we try to see what are the reasons of the highest sales in 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 mall of istanbul then we have to use the strategies on the other malls that have lower sales for them to increase their sales and also payments payment method so most customers prefer to pay by cash and so to ensure this um transaction to be working so i prefer that 
um, we should be taking more of cash payment because most customers prefer to pay by cash. Because based on, based on the data, they have the high, um, the, most customers pay um, with cash rather than using debit card and credit cards. So, so far, so good. Uh, this, this is it, yeah. Okay, that is beautiful. Um, beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Yeah, I can see some claps for you, Mohammed. Thanks for that presentation. So, yeah, quick question. Anybody has question or yeah, can you see that's all for you? <laughs> <laughs> so you did a great work. I think Daniel Adams has a question for you. So Daniel, you can go first, then favor um you can go after. Daniel, do you have a question? Tell me. Okay, favor, you can do it. Oh, thank you so much, Mohammed, for this brilliant presentation. I really enjoy it. You even go, you know, deeper into statistics uh, per se. So, uh, I, in order to buttress your point, yes, when I'm doing my home too, I did not even notice any missing value because there is no missing value. I don't know. Yeah, it, uh, I want to notice that. Yeah, because even this, when we are presenting, you said there's no missing value. Yeah, this is a missing value. You. I don't know. Uh, I maybe don't know. I, might be, I don't, I might I don't also have missing value in my own because I have zero zero zero. When I so maybe uh our uh our girl will shed more light on it. Yes. Then um you talk about the correlation aspect of it. So uh, you are now saying that but I really enjoyed the way you explain the results of the correlation because the correlation is the linear relationship between two variables and yes. it ranges from zero to you know uh, one yes. when we have uh, some may be low some may be high so in terms of your conclusion i really enjoyed that correlation aspect as well so thank you very much. let me give all that people to pass their own comments so thanks for your presentation i really enjoyed it thank then you. that clotting maybe something is wrong somewhere yeah something is wrong <laughs> yes. uh, yeah. yeah thank you so much okay that is good any question we'll take one more question then before we daniel you have your hands raised you have a question for mohammed yes i do uh, thank you mohammed for the presentation it was really insightful yeah. So my question, my question is, um, you said there was a positive relationship with price and sales. That's like as price was going up, sales was also going up. Yes, so wonder, sorry. Yeah, you said there was a positive relationship with price and sales. That's as price was going up, sales was also going up. Yeah. Yeah. So I needed to clarify: was it for all the categories of the? Products, or it was just for a particular category, or it was just generally any all the categories for all categories. Um, based on the analysis, I can say it's clothing because um, most customers um purchase um um clothing. Clothing as a category has the highest sales, so those items within clothing might be the one. And it's actually like like a moderate um positive correlation is a mod. It's not like a high. It's like moderate. Coin and price. It's like moderate. So I can I can see that those um, products within the clothing category are uh, maybe at one given give given that result actually. Okay. Okay. Um. Awesome. Thank you, Mohammed, for that presentation. I think mine is just a question, more like a comment per se. So you keep mentioning correlation. Um. For the benefit of people who are on this call who have not heard of correlation before or don't really know what it means. Do you mind just explain what correlation means and what it's, what it's, what's, so when you, when you say you have a correlation value of 0 0.34, what does correlation essentially capture when you're looking at like that in your analysis? Um, in a, like, um, um, correlation, like, um, I can say in a general term or in like in a layman's term, it's just it's kind of like it's just like relationship or connection between um two or or more variable or things something like that so it's just like it's just like a connection between two variables or things so if you see here 
the correlation between price and quantity, like, this here is a correlation between price and quantity. Price and quantity. So as you can see, even though the price, the price at 0 0.34 and also the quantity at, 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 at 0 0.34. So this quantity and price, they have a modest um, relationship. Like um, customers are willing to buy the products, even though those products are high. Like the products are like high, maybe like in high demand, maybe it's quality is so good. So customer don't mind buying those things. For example, like let's say like iPhones, right? Um, people, even though iPhones are expensive, most people will still go in for it. You understand? So in this analysis here, um, the correlation is between this one, price and quantity, as you can see, even though when the price is 0 0.34 and also the quantity is at 0 0.34. So this shows the relationship between these um, two, um, and I say variable, these two variables or things. Okay, thank you for that. Then my second question, if you scroll down to your um, insight and recommendation, Yes. I am struggling to understand why you think that. Um, so you said, therefore, you may want to consider focusing on high price items in your inventory because the data shows a, a correlation between price and sales. Can you walk me through the thought process that makes you think like this is a good idea? Because from a layman perspective, um, yes. If you if you if I want to buy something and then you tell me that this thing is 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 one thousand pounds for instance, and then I see somebody else selling it eight hundred pounds and they have the same product the same quality, I would be more likely to buy the one of eight hundred pounds. I mean everybody have their own preference, but I think can you just maybe help me understand why you think customers are willing to pay for high priced items. Okay, um, it's like that's a simple, a simple, simple economics. So customers like they always look looking to what to call like value for money. Um, so in in this analysis, the customers are willing to buy these products even though they are expensive, but because they are getting the value from these products, so they are willing to buy the products even though the the prices are high. So because of that, that's why I concluded by saying, um, these people, these customers are willing to buy these products because of the quality. And we, I'm, I might advise the management to invest on those products. Daniel? Yeah, I think it's not really uh, basically about the quality. It's more about uh, it being, there's what, is, there's what we call a normal goods. It's about it being a normal good. That's goods that are... Uh, required for everyday living, maybe food, you know, no matter how the price of food goes up, people will definitely want to eat. So they'll still have to buy. So it's about it being a normal good. And then there's also luxury goods. So if the prices of luxury goods go up, of course, people can do without that. So they can find substitutes for, for those uh, goods. So it's basically about it being a normal good, not just, not basic, not essentially about uh, quality. Okay, noted, noted. Yeah. Eva, you have a point? Thank you very much. I just want to ask Mohamed, are you really sure that uh, the higher the price, then the higher the quantity purchase of, to a layman? Because from this particular resource, I could see that uh, when the price is higher, the quantity we, that one will go for will be reduced. Like uh, Mohammed has rightly said that, uh, Abraham has rightly said that uh, uh, people, if so, some, if they are selling something for 800 pounds and it has increased to 1,500, do you not want to tell me that I will buy more of that uh, product when it is 1,500 pounds? So I'm not really, I, I'm, I, I beg to differ. Maybe we should do that, the correlation aspect. Uh, maybe somebody else yeah. should just do it. And, Let's see the um, results. I'll compare yeah. the results. Yes, um, I mentioned that. Um, I'm most convinced. I mentioned mm -hmm. that. Like, I do not have much knowledge on correlation because this is my first time. So, I just did a little research. So, like, um, I sound to be corrected and I will learn more about it and try oh, to. Oh, okay. I think that is better. Yes. yes. I, will, I, will, I will put it in mind. Yes. yes. Because I have Thank interest you. in it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Yeah. Okay. So, good. So, one point I would like to mention here is 
So it's, it's very important to state again that this data set we're working with is sample data set. So what you may discover when you do the analysis might violate like common principles or common like thought process or logic. So I think that's a very important thing to, to actually mention there. So, well, yeah, I really like the fact that, you know, you did your analysis and then at the end, you also added like some, some kind of recommendation. So same points, like I, I mentioned to the last presenter as well, it's good. Like when you do this type of analysis, you always, so which is why I, I encourage everyone of us to ask questions because um, as you ask questions, it, it, it provokes the person who is, who is actually presenting to think more about what the person could have done. Because if you're telling me that you're getting the correlation of, let's say 0 0.34, I'll be tempted to think like, is there a particular product category that is driving that correlation value? So when you look at the correlation using a subset of products, are you seeing some kind of like different, because what you may discover is that maybe if you look at correlation for a particular kind of product alone, you may get something higher than 0 0.34. And then if you look at it for a particular product, maybe you get a negative correlation. So, but I think like for, for the sake of this our class, um, the presentation you've done is, is really good. So thank you so much for, for the presentation, Mohammed. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank, thank you for giving the opportunity and um, the four weeks has been so helpful for me. Yeah, no worries. So we'll go to the next person. I think- uh, Excuse me, please. I, I really want to shed more light on something. I think I've seen something from this. Ah, okay, please just leave that. Uh, yes. Okay, if you look at the price against the sales, the correlation is 0 0.96, which means that if you can see it, just leave it like that. Price then to sales. I think we have 0 0.96 from this analysis, which shows that there is higher correlation between the price and the total sales. So from my own point of view, I believe if the price is, I'm just thinking the other way around, before, if, before we could have 0 0.96, which is of higher correlation, that is the, the sales depends on the price. Because if the price is low, Definitely, the, the 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 total sales will be high. Can you see it? We have zero point nine six. You know our yes. correlation ranges from zero to one. Yes, yes. So it's you will not see that that zero point nine six is very very close to one. It's strong. That is positive and it's very very high. Yes. So yes. that is there is correlation between the price and the sales, which means that if the price is very very low then the sales will be higher. I think that's why they have the highest, uh, the higher uh, correlation here. So what would you have said if the correlation value was minus 0 0.96? That is the negative. Yeah. If it is minus what? 0 0.96. 0 0.96. I think they have, that would be negative uh, relationship. So how would you negative interpret correlation that? between the two. How, how do you interpret Because the graph, we we not we not go you know we are uh, we, we, when you are looking at the graph you know we have positive we have negative mm -hmm. I don't know how to, uh, the trend I it will be a I kind of negative it will be negative the direction which means that when one is positive the other one will be negative okay. I feel it, which means yeah. that when one is higher the other one will be lower I don't know okay so let me just explain what is happening here so if you remember. I think Mohammed and the previous speaker mentioned that they created sales column from a formula, which is price times quantity, right? Mohammed, is that a formula? Yes, yes, this one. So what, okay, yeah, that's great. So what that value there is telling you is that if you look at just what we have on sale line there, if you increase the price, so that sales column there is just total sales. So basically what that 0 0.96 is telling you is that if you increase the price, that is essentially going to increase the total sales. That is what that is telling you. So let's say, for example, you have a quantity of 10 and then the price was, was, was seven. The sales you will get is 70. But then if the quantity is still 10 and then the price increased to say 20, so the total sales you will have in that case 
is going to be 20 times 10, which is 200. 200. So what that value is telling you. And the reason why you're getting very, very high value there is because actually price is one of the variables that is used to create sales column. Okay. Yes. And 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 what, what can actually happen is because you have so let's say you do so let's say you do sales equals to price alone. If you check the correlation for that, you would get one, which is a perfect correlation. So as price mm -hmm. increases, hundred percent of the time sales increase. But the reason why it has zero point nine six is because there are some instances whereby the quantity that people actually order is not dependent on the price. Okay. That's 0.04 percent that is missing. Quantity varies. Exactly. Mm -hmm. the quantity varies, but the 0 0.9 is there. It's just showing that the biggest driver for the sales, mm -hmm. sales, which is the, the the variable you created, is price. So that's what that is saying. Okay. You don't understand what correlation means. Mm -hmm. time, correlation just shows what is the the strength of the linear relationship mm -hmm. between two variables. So it, it it tries to answer two questions. So one of the question is. If variable one increase, increases, does variable two also increases? Or if variable one increases, does variable two decreases? That is what correlation just tries to measure. So it gives you an idea of how those two variables relate to each other. So if you have a correlation value of one, what that means is that in all cases, as variable one increases, then variable two also increases. That's a positive correlation. But if you have a negative correlation of minus one, what that means is that as variable one increases, then 100% of the time, variable two essentially decreases. So I like the fact that you added some kind of analysis around correlation here, even though we didn't really talk so much about, about it. And it's something that is really useful in like the kind of analysis that, that you do. So well done on, on that presentation, Mohammed. Yeah, uh, before, we go, before, before I exit. So, um, lastly, I want to say thank you very much. Um, based on what you taught me these four weeks, I did I did an, um, an interview for an admission to, for a master's program in economics and data science, and I was automatically admitted. And the questions they asked me came purely from this, this the, the basic Python we you taught us in in the class. Oh. I did the interview the twentieth, and I got admission the twentieth. Thank you very much. That's I'm so happy today to share to do this, to present. Oh, congratulations! congratulations. <laughs> thank you so much. Thank you. Congratulations. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, that's great. Congrats, Mohammed. Good to know. Yeah. Okay. So I think Rose, you you wanted to go next. Uh, so we'll give this floor to you. Are you there, Rose? Please, if you have. Yes, I'm here. Good evening. Just type your name if you have a presentation for us today, so that we we'll know how to manage the time. So at the moment, before now, I had just um, Rose, Mohammed, and um, Dan. So if you have any presentation. Please just type your name here so that we'll know. So at the moment, I will give the floor to you, Rose. So thank you. Good evening. Um, can you hear me? Yes, loud and clear. Okay. Uh sorry, I'm just going to share my screen now. Well, I'll not be saying anything too different from what um my colleagues <laughs> have already said. Um, yeah, that is fine. In data analysis, the, the difference can even come towards how you present it. So even if you guys do the same work, the fact that you're able to show us what you've done, I think that's a big one and a plus. So don't don't feel like anyhow, basically. Okay. Um, I think. Yeah. I don't know. Can you see my screen? Yes, it's up now. Thank you. Yes. Okay. All right. So I'll just go right into it. So the data we're given is a customer um, is a customer data set that has um, the customer ID, the gender, age, um, categories. That's um, the items that were bought, the quantity that was bought, the price of those items and the method of payment that was made by um, individuals who purchased it. So first of all, I imported um, some libraries, then um, I imported the data itself and also tried to view the first five rows with the dot head function. 
to know more about the data, to get to know the column names and the type of data it had. I also went ahead to view the, the tail of the data. That's the five last rows of the data. Then after that, I did, um, I used the dot shape, dot shape function to get the number of rows and columns. And it gave me, it showed you that it had um, um, 82,958 rows and 10 columns. And I also checked for the data types. Then I went ahead to check for missing values. So when I checked for missing values, there were actually missing values in the data set. We're missing values, but it's, I think it's just um, just one row that missed um, the price, payment method, invoice dates, and the shopping mall. Well, I didn't drop, I did not drop the table. I didn't drop that row rather. So I went ahead to do use the dot describe okay. function so how to did check you for. It? Sorry. How did you choose to handle the missing row since you didn't drop it? So I just ignored it because I felt it wasn't um, significant. Okay. Since it was just a single row. Okay. Sorry for interrupting. Can I continue? No, it's okay. <laughs> Thank you. So um, from the dot describe function it still gave the count of the total um, data we have in the data set to be 82,957 um, we could also see the mean of the age quantity and price meanwhile this dot describe function only gave the um, it only describes the numeric data that we have in the data set so it's just numeric data so I went ahead, I started the um, analysis properly. So before I started, I had listed out some analysis that I wanted to do. Some of them were successful and some of them wasn't. I wanted to know the, I wanted to make an analysis of the age versus the payment methods to see what age group um, used what payment methods. Um, the gender versus the category, to know the the gender and to know um, what what items do, does each of these gender um, buy or buy more. So first of all, I did an analysis of the category distribution, and from this analysis, from the bar chart, it shows that the clothing category recorded um, as it had more there was more purchase in the clothing category followed by the cosmetics and food and beverage and the other categories followed then i did the second plot i did here was for um, the gender distribution why i did this was to know um, what gender actually does um, more buying. So from this, um, it shows that um, females had more counts than the male. Um, okay, so, okay, so later I wanted to plot a graph for the age, to check for the age distribution. But it was coming out so clumsy, so I had to do. Um, I had to categorize the age to put them into um, age brackets, and created a new column which was called age underscore v two. So from there, from there, I, I now plotted the the distribution for age underscore v two. From this, we see that it could be said that um, people above 50, people above 50 um, were the ones who did more buying. Um, the ages I categorized in were 15 to 30, 31 to 40, 41 to 50, and greater than 50. So from this um, bar chart, it shows that 
people above 50 did more buying. Then I did the payment method distribution also, just to show what payment method was used more. And um, it shows that the cash payment was used more. We could also deduce from this that um, since people greater than 50 were the ones doing more purchase, um, I think it also relates to this, that they pay more in cash than using um, credit card or debit card. Then I tried to see the distribution for the shopping mall, to know the shopping mall, which um, people, um, the customers actually patronize more. Um, from the, the data set, it shows that the mall in um, of Istanbul, in Istanbul had um, high um, patronage from people. I don't know the reason, it could be because they had the items they wanted, but I, I don't know the reason for now why that is so. Then I tried to do a price distribution. I know this looks <laughs> very odd. <laughs> what I can say from this is that um, it seems the lower the price, the higher the purchase. I might be wrong, but that's okay. what I'm getting from here. I have to interfere. The price uh, list. So you say the lower the price, the higher the purchase, right? Yes. Okay. The so higher can, the items bought. Can you tell us how this is? This graph is showing us that because I think this is also interesting, and which is one thing with data analytics. I think this kind of is the the other side of like the analysis that Mohammed did. So Mohammed only saying like something else and then yours is saying something else so if you want to tell us like why you think this graph is showing that i think it'll be good okay i'll just try to ex okay let me just try um so from here on the x-axis we could see the price level and the y-axis shows us the count um as the price level increases we see that close to zero we are recording a higher count which is almost close to 3,000, and um, when the price increases up to about 3,000, I think the count reduces to less than 2,000. So that's why I said from this graph, it shows that the items that had less, um, less, less price got more um, patronage. Please continue. Okay, thank you. Now, I went ahead to do the correlation, but I won't go into that because I think we've done much about the correlation. I don't really understand much about it. Then I went ahead to do the bivariate analysis. I did price versus um, category. The price versus category bar, um, bar chart shows the category in our data set that has um high price that that costs more Let me put that way. so from here we could see that the clothing um category do not cost doesn't cost so high but the highest in the the highest here from the data set is the technology the technology category is above um, 5,000 for the price, above 5,000. So technology costs more and then um, clothing costs less, not the least anyway in the, the charts. I think the least should be food and beverage, but clothing, clothing also costs less than technology and um, shoes. So I think from this, we could also say that um, why the clothing section, why the clothing category, when we did the, um, when I did the, the clothing distribution was showing a higher count 
there's a higher um, sales. It could be said that because of the the pricing, and one another thing is that is an essential um, is an essential commodity for people to use. Then I went on to check for category versus um, the gender to know what um, what each of the gender would patronize more. But um, I would say the the bar chart here did not give me much, as in um, more. Um, it didn't throw more light on what I wanted to get. So I think just. A quick comment from me. So for this type of analysis, I don't know the exact name of the graph that can do that for you, but there can be a graph that you can get that the graph will give you, so it's, going to, it's going to basically split the gender by the category. So if we pick clothing, for instance, you see how many proportion of people buy clothing that are male, okay. how many proportion of female. Then you to do it for shoe, you to do it for books, you to do it for cosmetics. So basically, for all the categories that you have. And then once you look at that graph, like just looking at mm. it actually, you can see which of those products male are, are more likely to buy compared to female. So if that makes sense, I don't know the exact name for that plot, but yeah. it's a plot that exists that will help you to do that basically. Okay, maybe I'll try and could a pie chart do that? I think it's a cross start. Cross start bar chart. Yeah, so the clustered bar, okay. yeah, bar chart that gives you, I think that gives you the percentages on top of themselves. That's like okay. one possible way. But I think there's one other one that is not clustered that you can see the relative percentages. I'll try and check if there's any like um, materials for that, but there's a, there's a possibility of doing that actually, if that makes sense. Okay, cool. Thank you. And I think the same thing happened here in the gender versus the age underscore V2. Because I was trying to see between the male and the female, um, the ages of the people who bought more. Um, so here, that, that, that was where I ended my analysis. But I noticed that on um, Google Collab, you get um, suggestions of um, analysis to carry out. And one of the suggestions he gave to me was this, that I was trying to do method, payment method versus the age, to know the, the age that use um, what payment method more. So I think this um, analysis that Google Collab actually um, suggested is still is very um, explanatory anyway. So that's the end of my presentation. Thank you. Oh, that's lovely. Um, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, Ross. I think, Favor, you have a question. Your hands is raised. Uh, thank you so much, Ross. Very interesting and uh... Another a, another aspect. I mean, actually, you did not put in into total sales, and I really enjoyed the way you presented your own too in another dimension. Thank you. But so, uh, I looking at the number of rows and columns. I don't know. Maybe we are using the same data data set. My own. I have ninety nine thousand four hundred fifty seven row and ten columns. I think your own is. 82,958, 82, yes. then colon is 10. I don't know which one is correct, but my own is different from your own. I, maybe I made a mistake, I don't know. My row is... Um, I think happened. what happened, I don't know what happened anyway, but I was finding it difficult to... Uh, Hello? I, I, yes. Okay, so I was finding at first when I um, uploaded the data set, mm -hmm. I got I think about nine hundred and something. Nine thousand four hundred fifty-seven for row. Yes, yes, ninety. But ten. Yes, you are using is I think it's eighty-two thousand nine hundred fifty-eight yes. for row. Then 
colon mm -hmm. remains there. I don't know. So that is not yeah, that's what I'm saying. That initial initially when I uploaded the data um set, I got about nine hundred and something thousand rows. Mm -hmm. Um so for the the notebook I was using then, I don't know what happened. I couldn't <laughs> at a point I couldn't manipulate it anymore. So I had to start afresh. And when I started afresh, I noticed that the data I had, which was the same one I had uploaded uploaded before, had 800 and mm -hmm. 90 something thousand rules. Okay, maybe that's so the reason why you have uh, missing values. You know, I don't know. Maybe. Well, then uh, another question. I just want to know, how did you get the cans uh, and price level for price distribution. The count and the price level, there's a chart under price distribution. I don't know. Okay, so it's just, um, it's a univariate and um, data analysis from what um, Mr. Abraham taught us last time. So I only just use the price column to um, make this, um the bar chart to put okay. up the chart just the price column yes okay to just okay thank you so I'm wondering. If, I, if i were you one thing i could do here is because you see some of those values are missing there mm. so i will look at mm. the original price distribution and try and convert that price column into a categorical column so i'll say price between zero and five hundred okay. and one thousand then that way you can see relative distribution exactly. so it's, it's easier for you when you make your insight that you see that you know the total quantity decreases as the price increases i don't know if that makes sense so the same way you did for age basically so you can convert okay. column to categorical and then plot it and see what the distribution because the trend that you'll see will also going to be similar it could be that as price increases count increases or the other way around but that's one way i could i would i would have I guess, okay, man, I have just one comment or question. Can you go to that place where you did the total distribution by, by total shop? By the shopping mall? Yeah, shopping mall, yeah. Can you just go to that place? I think, okay. uh, yeah, this. So let's assume that, I mean, I like the fact that you say you don't know the reasons why, you know, some of these shops are, are having like, low account so let us assume that the business did further analysis and then they discovered that the reason is because of where the shops are actually located so mall of istanbul and kayon are in like city like major city locations but then the other ones are in like like um rural locations and then the the, the company says they want to increase the number of sales to those lower shops there. And, and as a data analyst, they ask you to give them recommendation. What would you recommend? Okay. Um, I'll first of all try to check for some things before making any recommendation. In this other... Um, cities where the malls are located if they are in um, rural areas would need to see first of all check the um <clears throat> like what kind of people stays in this place what are their income um what what are their income range what's what income category do they fall under would they be able to afford these products if we move them to this place So I think I would recommend that they would um, maybe do a test in those areas and see if it doesn't work, then we'll, we'll move back to the, the cities that we've recorded more sales. Okay, yeah, okay, that's great. All right, thank you so much, Rose. Really great um, presentation. Thanks for, for sharing your insight with us. I think, is there any other person um, that has something to share with us? I'm checking the chat now. I can't see any name here. 
Is there any other person? Fable, I was expecting you to have something to share with us today. I think they have said it all, Lou. I'm enjoying it. So ah. I'm just trying to compare with what I have with No, no, no. If you have something, just share with us. Don't it... worry. Let's proceed. Let's proceed. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Does anyone have any other thing to share? Anybody prepared something? Deborah? Deborah, are you here at all? Uh, I just joined, not quite long. <laughs> okay. Do you have anything yeah. for us? Anyways, I it's more or less the same thing with what um rose just presented the yeah. only difference is the um number of rose parts that um favor mentioned and the missing value do you want to share it with us uh, it's the same thing let's just <laughs> let's just continue please okay so everyone is saying the same thing okay let me see um pauline do you have anything for us no, sir. Okay, great. Okay, great. Yes, sir. Let's continue. Okay. Okay. Daniel Adams, do you have anything for us? Yeah, I was the one who sh who shared first. Hold on, I think. Okay, so you changed the name. Oh, okay. Yeah, yes, yes, I changed it. Yeah. Okay, Filani, do you have anything for us? Michael King. Samuel Ajayi Uchechi. So yeah, it's the same thing uh, that's from the previous, the last uh, presenter. But what I noticed in my own is that I don't have any missing uh, values. And then the previous presenters as well noted that they had missing values there. So I wonder why the difference. Okay, okay. Samuel Uchechi. Okay, that's great. So in the absence of no other, I think um, I must have mentioned this before in, in like previous emails. So today's our last, today's our last class actually. It's been like a good four weeks of just learning Python together. And I think I will just talk about a few things from the presentations that everyone like has made today. And, um, but before I do that, I think maybe this is just the the time for people to say anything. Like, if you have any question at all from week one down to date, like, or even anything that was presented today, even if you were the one that presented it, but you didn't really understand a few things that you want to ask myself a question or general questions in Python. If you have any of those, please. Um, I think we'll just take the next few minutes for that, and then um, I'll just see what i have okay mohammed yes um thank you once more um so you know like i i did something on correlation but i, I did not like understand it that much because that was like this that was my first time of um doing something on correlation of course it's my first time of using python so mm -hmm. um can you um like can you have a session or can you do it now like for you to throw lights on python or can you recommend any, any sites or material to read, like we can grasp the knowledge of correlation? And also, uh, for me, I think it's kind of be, it's kind of personal because for my based on the course I, I, I'm going to do soon, like I have to do like machine learning. So I was thinking like we'll have like two weeks or one week on something like machine, just like an intro to machine learning, and so and maybe for everyone to benefit from it again. And <laughs> it's yeah, that's all. Thank you so much. Um. Yeah. So you're actually putting me on the spot now. And <laughs> so the plan initially was to just do this Python one and you know that would be it because it has been something on my mind for a while now. For now, I don't really have plans for like machine learning stuff. But what I can say is just try and connect with me on LinkedIn. If you start your course and then anywhere down the line you you need help with anything. So I'm 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 very active on LinkedIn. So you can you can message me. I'm also on ADP. So there's this platform called ADP. It's a platform where you can book to just chat with like anybody that is on that platform. Usually around 30 minutes conversation. So I would also share my my ADP profile. So if at, at any point you want to just chat for 30 minutes or whatever, like with respect to your course, you can try and book book a time there. Um, but the, the general idea of correlation, just like I talked about before, is 
it just helps you to measure the linear relationship between two variables. So if you think about, I'm just trying to think of the best example to use to explain correlation. So let's say you have a variable called age and you have a variable called salary. Now, with correlation, the question you're trying to answer basically is that as people's age increase, does their salary increase? Or as people's age increase, does their salary decrease? That is what correlation would, would give you. So when you do that type of correlation analysis, maybe you have a correlation value of, let's say, 0 0.6. So what that basically means is that majority of the time, as people's ages increase, their salary increase. Now, the reason why it is not a perfectly one like correlation is that there are some people who are maybe middle age or let's say in their twenties that are likely to earn higher salaries than people who are in their thirties or their forties. And so that is why the correlation is not perfect. But if in your data set, what is present is that as everybody's age increases, their salary increases, then you get a perfect correlation of 1.0. So that's what correlation just tries to, I'll, I'll try and see if I can find any article that would be good to, to take a look at. But that's what correlation tries to, to measure basically. So, and the range of correlation is between um, minus one and plus one. So minus one is perfectly negative correlation. And the interpretation for that is as one variable increases, as the value of one variable increases, the other one decreases. And then you go from minus one and then you have zero correlation means there's no relationship between them. Um, and then you go to plus one, which is perfectly strong correlation. So the one on zero correlation is, if you, if you look at maybe something like, I can't think of an example, but there are some variables that if you look at their correlation, if they don't re relate at all, let's say somebody's height and their, their salary or something. I'm just thinking of an example on the spot, but there could be a scenario where you would have like zero correlation. And that means that there's no linear relationship between the two of them. I I'll check for an article. Okay, so I think somebody else, Ross, do you want to go next? Okay, thank you. Um, What I want to ask is um, while performing the analysis, I just noticed that today, I will put in scatter plots to put it, do a scatter plot, and it still gives me a bar chart. Okay, so yes, I actually noticed that's why you are doing the presentation. Yes, I <laughs> and I was wondering in my head what the reason could be. But so I was done yes. on that. <laughs> possibly, and um, that particular chart wasn't scatter plot wasn't fit for that particular comparison that you were trying to do. So you were doing it, if I remember, a bivariant, right? And you're trying to yeah. compare scatter plots. I don't know, maybe, it, okay, thank God it is here. So you might, but that was part of what I was thinking about when I saw that you actually put a code for, um, for bar scatter chart plot, and you yeah. were, uh, scatter plot and you're getting a bar chart. Yeah, so I was asking, but it don't know me that possibly data sets and what you were trying to compare wasn't the best fit for them. Yeah, so, I mean, you're spot on there somewhere. So usually all of these different type of visualizations that you have, the one basic requirement for them is that the data set needs to be in a particular way. So if you want to plot histogram, you know, you need um, this type of variables or this type of like other categorical or numerical, so if you're passing in a data set that doesn't align with the requirement for a scatter plot, then essentially you may not get like scatter plot. And I think that is what is happening in, in, in case of what we are trying to, to plot there. So if you go to the previous like examples of one that we plotted, I think for scatter plot, let me just see if I can have a look at the um, requirement for that. Cause there need to be a requirement for what you have on your X, Y, Z, X axis and your Y axis as well. If you don't if you don't have that in the way it is specified or required then your plot may not give you what you actually expect um mm -hmm. let me see so yeah from where what i just checked now so your x-axis need to be numerical and your y-axis need to be numerical as well so if you don't have 
numerical data on your y and x axis, then you may not have scatter plot. Yeah, so so try and check if the variables that you're trying to plot, both of them actually numerical. Because what I'm sorry, can I say something? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay, like what I said earlier, I know one of the criteria for a scatter plot. Sorry, I've not been very active here because I really don't want to. Okay, I know quite a lot. So I've been, I'm, in fact, I'm currently studying data science and analysis. And of course, I've been using Python for a while, but trust me, I enjoyed your class so much. Thank you. It's, it's at least I learned, I learned a few things from it. Thank you so, so much. But um, talking about scatter plots, one thing I know about scatter plots is it doesn't work for when you're trying to compare several variables with one variable. Right. Mm, is that the best? Like the way it, she was trying to use it, I can see one variable I guess versus another variable. She's comparing it, I guess, more like a bivariant. A scatter plot. I don't know if it works for that. What I know it works for is possibly if you're trying to compare maybe different years with the quantity of goods that was being supplied at different times. So a, a scatter plot can work for that. But in the case where you're trying to compare cosmetics, different variables on a given variant, uh, scatter plots, like you actually said um, a bar chart where you have different percentage plotted on um, a clustered bar chart. Yes, that will work fine for that, but a scatter plot wouldn't work fine for the for that particular kind of comparison. So you want to consider the data sets you're trying to look and what you're trying to investigate. And that most likely will um, suggest the kind of bar chart or the kind of graph rather visualization that will be fit for that particular data set. Thank yeah, you. I can send you something that would help you understand more about scatter plots but again very important um, to note that if you pass in the wrong either data set or data format or like um variable type they may not give you so like for instance let's say you want to plot age against salary so for that with scatter plot basically you can be able to look at okay as the age increases what does the salary value look like? Is it increasing or decreasing? So basically, if you have that type of structure, then if you put it into a scatter plot format, where you have like numerical variable against numerical, then you can see that straight line or flat line or um, inverse line. But if you don't have it that way, then I think that could be one of the reasons why your, your plot is... What were you trying to plot again? Yeah, I actually checked it while you were explaining, and I saw that it wasn't numerical data I had there. I had categorical data, data uh -huh. rather. So that's why it did not work. Yeah, so I think you need Thank to you. You need to have both of them as, as numerical. Then, because it, it just places two of them on X and Y plane, then you, you know the way you have coordinates, X coordinates, for the value of X, what is the value of Y? Or for the value of Y, what is the value of X? And that's what it plots on the, the graph that you have, and then you eventually have whatever image you want. So I think just try and change that um, and ensure you're putting in the right value, then you get what you what you need. Favor, I think we need to give you an award for the most. <laughs> most Thank you very much, Mohammed. Uh, uh, Abraham. Okay. I think uh, I would like to go with what uh, Samuel Ajayi just said that uh, uh, bar charts, if you look at bar charts very well, we have uh, different types of bar charts. We have uh, normal bar charts, we have um, double, we have multiple and all that. I think uh, bar charts will be, will fit that, uh, that uh, would be appropriate for that uh, thing that we are looking at. Well, that one is by the way. Let me just go straight to my point, uh, to my question. I would like you to shed more light on uh, missing values, 
how to remove missing values and all that. that. Then uh, to address what uh, Mohammed has just said concerning the machine learning, if you can just spare a week for us to teach us, because I really enjoyed the class, at least just a week for machine learning. Just give us the, you know, the foundation and all that on machine and then we can as well go and read along then yes. my, my last question is uh, concerning the correlation you, you you explain a lot concerning the correlation but i just want to shed more light on it that uh, this may not be a simple correlation it may be a multiple correlation in which we have uh, we are comparing two or more independent variables to a single dependent variable for example when our y i don't want to i don't know how to explain when we are comparing let's say our price is our dependent variable let's call it y and we are comparing it to more than one you know variable like uh some other variable that has already listed on the on the data set. So what I'm trying to say that we have simple correlation and we also have multiple correlation. Correlation is very, very interesting. We have a lot of materials on it on the internet. So if one can really sit down and read it, we will be able to understand what correlations is all about. Thank you. Okay, thanks for that favor. So I think I'll start by saying that in in whatever career you find yourself, the internet must be your best friend for several reasons. Um, because literally anything you want to understand, you can find resources online, you know. So, um, and I'm saying this from experience, there are a lot of times when I work on projects in the industry and I start the project without idea of what exactly I need to do or what I want to do. And I usually spend days, sometimes even weeks, trying to just think about what can be done, research. Um, sometimes just get angry with ChatGPT because it's not giving me what I want. And so in in in, in any career you're building or you want to build or, or advanced, research is, is very important. And um, just like Favor mentioned, it's it's it, it, Everything I explained about correlation now may not be all there is to correlation. You can go online and you, you discover that there's more to everything we've said about correlation. But everything we've done in this class is just to give you like fundamentals, base knowledge, and then you can build up from that. So in terms of missing value, it was one of the things I was, I was actually gonna talk about. So one thing to always remember is that anytime you encounter missing values, there are several reasons why that missing value could be happening and in statistics or machine learning basically um, there are different categories so you have missing at random you have missing not at random and then you have missing completely at random i think there could be a couple of others as well and so the 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 nature of the missingness actually determines how you need to handle that so if i give a typical example let us say you're analyzing a data set and then you discover that um your your variable price which is one of the important variables in your data set you discover that price has missing values and let's say your data set has 1000 rows and the price was missing or let's say five rows so if you convert that to a percentage that's basically five divided by by 1000 which is a small number right so for me, one of the things I always try to do is anytime I find missing value in data set, I always want to understand why exactly is it missing and can I be able to get the actual values that were missing there? Because sometimes what can happen is that those values can be missing because maybe somebody that is supposed to populate those things didn't populate it for a particular days. And so if you try to ask them, they can oh go back to their data set or database and get you those five missing values for the price column. That is the first thing I always try to do. So first thing, try to ask, why is it missing? Can I get the actual values for those missing records? Now, what can happen is that in some instances, 
when you discover that those data sets are missing, you try to ask. They can tell you, oh, we don't think we can we can get it for you again. You know, um, it's, it's not possible to get that again. So there are two things you can do in those scenarios. Three things, actually. The first one is that you try and impute those missing values. So in, in terms of handling missing values, there's something called imputation. So imputation is basically the process of replacing those missing value with another value. So let's say, for example, if you're dealing with a numeric variables, if you're dealing with a numeric variable, one of the things people always do is to use mean value to replace the missing value. So back to the example I was trying to explain, to your price column, you can just try and replace the missing value with the mean value for all the other 995 records you have. So basically all of those missing instances will be, will be replaced by the mean. So let's say if the mean is, is um, 500. So basically anytime there's a missing value, that will be replaced by 500. But if it is a categorical variables, categorical variable, one of the things you can try to do is you can replace it with the mode. So if mode is basically the highest occurring one. So anytime there's a missing value, you tend to replace it with the mode. So I tend to do missing value imputation if I have majority of my data points missing. So let's say back to the example of 1000 rule, if I discover that over 50% of them are missing, let's say 700, 700 of them are missing, um, it will be very, very important to try and figure out how to fill the 700 with actual values as much as possible. Because what can happen is that you can have 700 um, um, records that are missing. And when you try to ask question, maybe the database admin can give you 400 out of those 700, and then you're left with 300 that are missing. So in that case, what you can do is that you can just try and replace those missing values with the mean. Now, one of the things that is very important to mention is that you need to be careful when doing that. Because if, let's say you have 1,000 rows and then 300 are missing. Now, if those 700 are non-missing, if they have outliers, basically what that means is that if you try and compute your mean, your outlier value would be very high. And so when you replace all those missing values with the outlier, with, with, the, with the average, you're trying to introduce some kind of bias. So anytime you want to try and use mean to impute, ensure that you sort of look out for outliers because they, they may give you false mean value. In the second scenario, if you have 1,000 uh, 1, records and then you discover that three or four are missing, usually most times I just prefer to drop them. If they, they, they are, if the number of records that are missing fall below a particular threshold. So for instance, if I remove three records from 1,000, what that means is that I'm still left with 997. So it's fine if I, if I re remove those rules because it doesn't really cost me so much. But if I have 1,000 rules and 400 of them are missing, I won't be tempted to drop them because if I drop them, my number of rules will reduce from 1,000 to 600. And that's a big number that you know would, would be lost in my data set. So these are some of the things that I think are very important to mention. But the overarching goal is there's no one standard approach to replacing missing value. The approach you take depends on what, what is missing, what percentage is missing. Is it possible to get the actual values that is missing? If not, then you choose between either dropping those rules or imputing them. Does that help favor? Yes, 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 yes. You know, I'm giving you thumb up. Yeah, I'm enjoying it. Then what of the outliers? Can we just remove the outlier right away? So for outlier, again, the answer is there's no direct, there's no direct answer. That's one thing you discover when you dive deep into like data science machine learning. With outliers, again, it depends on how many percent of records are actually outliers. Because one of the things that people easily do which is always advisable to do something called capping. So with capping, so let's say for example, you, 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 you have a column that records people's price. And then all of a sudden you discover that, you discover that majority of the price is between 1,000 to 2,000 Naira, for instance. And then you discover that one price, what you're getting is, is 10 million, right? So for that particular example, you can do one of, of several things. One is to just drop that rule, which is not my preferred option, right? But then the second thing you can do is to cap it. So with capping, what you're saying is that if 
any row has a value that exceed this particular threshold, replace it with this maximum threshold. So back to the example I was talking about, what you can say is that if I have any price that exceed 10,000, basically replace it with 10,000. So what that means is that you're setting the maximum price ever possible to be 10,000. So if it is 1 million, 10 million, 20 million, you cap it at, um, uh, at 10,000. And so that is the second way you, you approach. So you either drop it, which is not my preferred, or you do capping. Again, this depends on how many outliers you see in your data set, like what is the, the proportion of outliers that you have, and then that, that will be what would determine what kind of way you, you handle it. Okay. And sometimes those outliers could be very valid observation. So if they are valid observation, then you need to be careful about how you handle them, right? So let's say, for example, you, you're, you're tracking sales and then you discover that on a particular Sunday, sales just went up because that Sunday is um, maybe a particular event happening. So in that case, you want to replace, you want to look at all the previous Sundays before that Sunday. What does the distribution look like? So maybe you look at the previous four Sundays or five Sundays, and you, you, you can use the average of the previous five Sundays to just replace this week's Sunday where you had the, the, the very high value. Because that high value is just something that just occurred because there's an explanation to it. And so if you don't replace it that way, sometimes, especially if you're doing things like time series analysis, it may, it may end up affecting what kind of predictions your model will give in the future. So in that case, just look at what is common and then try and use maybe average or percentile or, or mean or max to just replace it with the outlier. Okay, thank you so much. But in a situation like uh, uh, you know, when you're talking about outliers, you are talking about the extreme values. This may be the higher value. Or the... Can you mute? No. Colin. Can I continue? Colin, can you mute? Okay, continue now. Okay. You know, when we are talking about outliers, we are talking about the extreme values. Yeah. This may be the higher values or the lower uh, values, right? But we can use, uh, like you said, we can use both plots to, you know, detect these outliers. Mm -hmm. But in a station we are by, the, okay, for example, like what you've just said, that if uh, you're talking about, I don't know, uh, between 50 to 100, and we just have something like 150. You said that uh, we can as well do capping, that you should replace that 150 with the, the highest that we have in that place. But in the situation we have by, it's lower. For example, we have something like 10. Mm. So definitely we are going to do the capping to be 50. That is the minimum value. That 10 will be replaced with the minimum value. Am I communicating? I yes, know. yes. So outlier can be, good point actually, outlier can be on either end. So it can be on the maximum or the minimum. So when you do capping, what you're saying is that if it's higher, higher threshold capping, if it is greater than this value, replace with this. If it is lower threshold capping, if it is less than this value, replace with this. So it's on both okay. cases. Fine. Thank you. Okay, so any other question from anyone? Um uh Ibrahim, a no, comment. I'll see you later. I'll see you later. Yes, can you hear me, sir? Yeah, I can hear you. For me, you be my mentor. It's it's a it's it's a first thing in <laughs> my mentor. Honestly, I was enjoying I, I, like I was enjoying when you when you explained this this um this thing. Honest, like anyway, make sure you send the the, the, the recording to us because I have to sit again and listen to what whatever I've said here. And also, I'll come to your DM. <laughs> yes, I'll come to your DM. Ah, okay, I've heard you, Mohammed. All right, well, okay, so, Brian, thank you are so we much, going to end this class this thank week? You. Oh, yeah, yeah, this is our last kind of extra week for us. Today is our last class, unfortunately. Oh, my so, goodness. I think I would think about the point that you guys talked from, like machine learning. So, if if I eventually decide to go ahead with that, please do. I would um I, you guys would be the first set of people I would wow. see. Wow. <laughs> see. Oh my god. Um, but yeah, today is our first class. So, and I think one other thing I would do when I'm sending the this email 
later today or tomorrow. I'm going to send a feedback form. So that feedback form is going to be you just being very realistic with me. Um, and I would want you guys to tell me what, what went well with the course or the classes, what didn't go well, what are the areas you think I can improve? Because this is, I think this is my first time actually doing this type of like thing. And so in case I want to do this type of thing in the future for like, you know, maybe other other classes or other people, um, it'd be good to understand areas where I can improve because that's one thing, there's always things to improve on. So um, that's one thing that is good to also mention. Then yeah, the WhatsApp group we have. So the reason we created that WhatsApp group, sorely, is just because of our learning engagement. So I think what I would do is that, I mean, I discover some people join the WhatsApp group. So I'll just leave the next few days, maybe four or five days um, after today. But eventually my plan is to just um, close up um, the WhatsApp group. So if you want to connect with me, um, like I said before, I'm on LinkedIn. So you can just send me a connection request. If you have questions or whatever, feel free to, to reach out to me. But yeah, I, I really love the fact that, you know, you guys have been very participative throughout the four weeks period. Because one of the things I had was when I when I was when I was planning to do this, I was like, is there anybody who be who be really willing to listen to me speak or something? So on the first class, I was like, okay, let me see. Are they going to join or but you guys gave me like the confidence that I needed. So thanks for following through. Like I, I am pretty sure that with everything you guys have learned in these four weeks, as long as we keep improving and developing on it, um, the sky is just only going to be a starting point. Like for example, we see Mohammed who talked about the fact that he went to an interview and some of the things he learned from the class were really helpful for him. And that's how these things work. Knowledge is knowledge is powerful until you have it, you don't have it. But once you have it, you can keep on building on it and building on it. And my plan is that in the next few years from now, you never know where we can meet again. But I hope this learning engagement would be pretty useful to as, as many people as possible. And please, if at any point in the career, you feel like you need help or you're getting stuck, my LinkedIn is always open. Um, and you can also check me out on ADP list. I'll be more than happy to to help or um, provide like any kind of assistance that you may need. So I think Adams, you raised your hand. Do you have something to say? Yes, I do. It's about the WhatsApp group. You know, um, one thing that I think has stood out stood out is the fact that we could all come together and share this community. And to me personally, I feel like um, seeing watching another person doing it can be a sort of motivation and inspiration for you to do it. So I was thinking instead of disbanding the group, let it just be like our own community where everyone can drop up of this. Okay, this is um, this particular course I'm doing. This is what I'm doing right now. I think it would be like a means to spur everyone's uh, growth. And maybe once in a while also, you can also drop some tips for us. Okay, you can do this, do this. Yeah, instead of just uh, let me permit me to use the phrase tra train us train us to the wind <laughs> okay that's a tricky one wale wale are you on the call yes i am what do you think because me I, my plan was at the end of the class let's just have the let's hear for let's 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 hear from others you know the thing is i also don't really like the idea of multiple whatsapp ev everywhere but if uh, let's hear from any other person, what if they feel like we should keep it or we should discard it? Okay, but the question is, Please, uh, let's what, keep it what, okay, I, I think there will be subsequent classes. Like you said, if you don't like the idea of uh, having multiple classes, it could be a case where you leave it, then other, other people can join this particular group there are people here that might want to join other classes just for the fun of it and possibly pick one or two things right and add to what they already know so um if it's just a group that possibly could spur other people on to learn i think it's it's, it's a good one and we might i don't we might consider or you might consider keeping it so i don't know I think if it will help others really my only worry with having these groups is sometimes I always believe in like if I want to do something, I'll do it with like all of my, my mind and all. So 
the only thing I'm just thinking about now, we could be in a scenario whereby this course finishes and maybe the next time there's a message on that group is in the next two months. So that's what I'm I'm just trying to basically avoid. We can have the group as a point where people can, and again, if you look at what has been happening in the past few weeks, I've said that if people have questions, they can ask. So what I think now is, if we didn't really get so many people asking questions during the four weeks when we're actively doing the course, that makes me think that the group may just be there, dormant, and nothing really happening. So that's that's the perspective I'm, I'm I'm bringing it from. I don't know if, which is why I, I agree with Wally. It'd be good to understand what other people think. Do you guys want us to keep the group? You know, if there are questions, you can ask there, and that means you guys are okay with the group being dormant for a while until maybe anybody has something to discuss. Or do you guys think, oh, look, let's just disband this. WhatsApp group because we're done with our learning engagement. And just to say, I'm, I'm happy with mm -hmm. with either one, either option. It just depends on what majority of people want. I, I just wanted to make a comment uh, concerning the group. I understand I've also been in some group that eventually they go dormant. Um, but I, I just, I like the way you've gone uh, with the training. How you have actually built people up, especially giving us that introductory class to Python. I don't know, maybe it's something you're looking towards in the future, because I believe that every one of us here can be pointers to your future project. Absolutely, we this was done for free. I don't think I've seen uh, a class like this that is done for free. Everything is about money, you know. And for you to actually take your time, it's not easy training people for free. And I believe that is something that you want to look at in the future. And this class that you're having for the first time, the people there, I think the only reason why I think the WhatsApp might help can be the pointers to bringing more people to it. And, that, and at that particular point, it becomes like a major work for you and all that. So I believe that when people pay, I also believe that when people, I, don't get me wrong, but people start talking about pay. <laughs> you know, people tend to value more things when uh you know money is being involved and all that so but uh, you have done this for free but everyone everyone here can be point of course everyone here has a good testimony about what is going on and we can be good pointers to whatever you want to do in the future so i think for me that would be a good reason to keep it okay no problem i think one of the things i will do is um in the survey i'm sending out I will just add one point to just say, do you want to be on the group or, or not? I can just use that statistics to, to make a conclusion um, on, on what to do. But yeah, um, please feel free. When, when you're feeling that survey, give me honest feedback. Most especially the things that could have been done better, because I think that's what I'm really optimizing for when I get this type of insight. So yeah, um, I will send over the recording as soon as it's available. I'll send it over today or tomorrow. And please feel free, connect with me on LinkedIn. Um, if you have other interesting things to share, please feel free to always reach out to me. And I, I really wish that this class would be helpful to as many people as possible. And yeah, let's go and keep building great careers. So speak to each and every one of you again at some point in the future. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Bye. And thank you, Wally, for putting it together. Thank you. Thank you, Wally. Thank, thank you so much, thank boss. You. Thank you, my God, Mr. Wally. Thank you. <laughs> so, I should have even said this uh, for those that want to join advanced uh, Excel class. We are starting that in April. Thank you. Okay. okay. And one of, and one, our lecturer is actually uh, Samuel Ajayi. Samuel that is on the call here with us. So for those oh, that are interested okay. in advanced Excel, please be on the watch. I would also share it in the group. The yes, link to okay. really start for it. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank, Thank you. you.